Okay, so welcome to Module 3, and we're in the third section, Chart of Accounts, and this is Part 1. Now, the Chart of Accounts is really going to be the most important part of QuickBooks because anytime you bring money into the company or money flows out of the company, you're going to have to track what that money was for. Was it a sale you made for the business? Was it a meal that's a business expense? Was it an office supply? And every single thing in QuickBooks will relate back to the chart of accounts somehow. So this is a real important part. I want you to get out paper and pen if you haven't done so yet and take some notes here. Many times what happens is when clients ask me to look at their chart of accounts, they usually say something like this. They usually say, I'm running this specific report and the numbers just don't look right. This should be over here or that should be over there. And so the first thing I look at is, did they set up the chart of accounts correctly? And a lot of times they haven't. Okay, so here's where you get into the chart of accounts. We're on your home screen and you'll see right here, chart of accounts. Now, the first thing I wanted to mention is, these are set up by type and you can see if they have the same type and you look over at the name, they'll be alphabetical or if your numbers are on, they'll be numerical. Now let me review where these numbers were because this is not always turned on automatically in QuickBooks. You're going to go back to the edit option on your menu. You're going to look at preferences and when you come in, make sure you're on the very top category called accounting and you'll need to be under the company preferences. Now here's the use account number option, so if it's not on, you can check it to turn it on or vice versa if you don't want on, you can turn it off. That's really up to you if you want to use these. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that and you can see that we are using them in this particular case. Now the other thing I wanted to mention was if for some reason you're looking at yours and they're not numerical, they're not alphabetical, maybe the list just isn't sorted the way you think it should be, notice you can click this word name if you want to sort them by number, you can click the word type if you want to sort them by type and so forth. The best way to read this list is by type. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit about some of the accounts that you would need to add and then of course you'll have others after you get through with this video and you're working in QuickBooks and a couple months later you find one you need to add, that's okay. But if you can get the bulk of it set up up front then you'll be good to go. Now the ones that you see currently are the ones that QuickBooks decided you needed based on all of the options you set up so far. So we're going to look at these by type. Now the first type that I want you to notice that aren't even here are bank accounts. So if you had a checking account or a savings account, you would not see those here. You'd need to set those up. Now the way you're going to set them up is you're going to click at the bottom left where it says account and you'll notice here's where you can create a new one, you can edit one, or you can delete one. Now a couple things I want to mention. First of all, you cannot delete an item from any list in QuickBooks if you've already used it even once. So if you needed to, for example, let's say you had a checking account and you don't use that bank anymore and you didn't want it to show on the list, then you can actually make it inactive so it hides it from the list. It doesn't delete it, it hides it, but it still pulls into reports if it needs to. But we're going to click on new and create a new bank account. So as we go through here and click on the new account, you have to click on the left on whatever type of account it is you're creating. And let's say this is a bank account. Now I want you to notice here on the right that it tells you what a bank account is. So for example, checking and savings, that's pretty obvious. If you have more than one checking, then you set each one up separately. And when you name them, you can name them anything. You can call them checking, you can call it uh, the name of your bank, you can call one operating, one payroll. Really doesn't matter as long as you know what they represent. Notice that petty cash is on the list. So if you happen to have a little box that has $100 in it, and you'd like to give your employee 20 and they bring the receipt and get paid back, that works great for that. But let me tell you one that's not on this list that you probably want to add. And that's something that I like to call cash expenditures. Many times, especially in a very small business, the owner may actually use physical cash to buy something for the business. Maybe you ran into the office supply store and bought some pens and it was just a couple bucks and you paid for it with cash. 
that's a legitimate office expense and you'd want it to go in QuickBooks. There wouldn't be any way to put it in here unless you actually had an account running for that. So we can talk more about that later when we talk about setting up our different registers and working with those. But meanwhile, we're setting up a bank account in this case, so we're going to hit continue. Now, if you picked the wrong type on the previous screen, then you can always go back and change it at this point. But ours is a bank account. Okay, let's say we're going to number this one 14,000 since we're not using those numbers yet. Now, one thing to tell you about the numbers. QuickBooks is not going to assign them. You need to look and see what the next logical number might be. So, for example, in this case, if I clicked back on the left on Chart of Accounts, you can see the 15,000 series is where it starts. So that's why I started with the 14,000 series. So I'm going to click back on New Account. Okay, here's where you name your account. And like I said, you can name it anything. We'll just call this one Checking. And it's not a sub-account of another one. Later when we talk about your expenses, I'll show you what a sub-account is. But this is just the main account in this case. And notice you can put a description here if you'd like. So if you want to put the bank name or anything so that if someone is looking at this, they know what checking means. Now there is a place to put your bank account number and your routing number, and I do not suggest you put these in here. There are many fields in QuickBooks that are strictly informational fields. There is no reason that QuickBooks needs this information. Even if you're going to use online banking, you don't need to put it here because there's other places you put that information when you're hooking that up. Now, you will need an opening balance. So what I suggest you do is go ahead and decide which month you're going to start your QuickBooks file with. So for example, if it happens to be October right now and you say, I'd like to start October 1st, get your bank statement out and whatever the September ending number is, that will be the October beginning number. Or if you already have your October statement, the beginning balance. Now, if you've decided to go back to the beginning of the year, then you would want to get your January statement, obviously, and go ahead and put that number in here. But let's go ahead and put in a number, and I'm just going to make one up. Let's say you had $5,000. Now notice that I typed 5,000, no dollar sign, and I typed 0, .00. You do not have to type the 0, .00 if it's a flat, no pennies there. But you know, I'm just in the habit of doing that, so I did. Now statement ending date, you can type a date or you can pick from the list here. And I'll just go back and say January the 1st in this particular case. And so what you'll notice is that now I have $5,000 as of the 1st of 2014. So I'll click OK. And then you're going to see that it actually says so right here. Now a couple of other things just to notice. This is just kind of a neat little feature. Remind me to order checks when I reach check number and you type in that number. So it'll pop up and say you need to order checks. Would you like to buy them from us? And by the way, you do not have to buy your checks from Intuit. You can buy them anywhere you like. Save and close means go ahead and save this and put me back on the previous screen. And notice if a transaction is more than 90 days in the past, it will pop up and ask you, are you sure you'd like to save this? And by the way, if you don't want this warning every time, then you can actually change that in the preferences like it tells you here. But I'll go ahead and say yes. And notice it's going to take me back to my chart of accounts. Now you will get this set up bank feed option often when you're setting up new accounts. And this is just basically saying that your financial institution does have the ability for you to download from the bank and you can set that up. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. So we're going to go ahead and say no here. And notice I now have a checking account with $5,000 as my balance. All right, we're going to go ahead and set up a savings account the same way. Now let me just show you a little time saver. If you're a right clicker, you can right click and notice that new is on the list this way. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a savings account the exact same way. I'm going to say it's a bank account. I'm going to hit continue at the bottom. And let's say I number this one 14,500. I'm going to call it savings. And let's go down to the opening balance and we'll say that we had $10,000. As of, and this time I'll just type in the date. All right, I'm going to click OK. And then we'll save and close at the bottom. And yes, I understand it's 90 days in the past, so I'll go ahead and say yes. And now you'll notice that 
I have a savings account now with $10,000. So you should always be able to look at this list and see the balances in these accounts. Now I do want you to notice one other as we're going along. Do you see this one here that says opening balance equity? It says I have 15000 So what happens in real life accounting is there's always a debit and a credit for everything. And the neat thing for you as a user is you don't have to know both sides of the entry. It knew the flip side for you. So anytime you have a plus balance that you're putting in, like you're opening an account with $5,000 like we did, it's going to go into this as a plus in the equity. If it's a opening balance that you will owe, like a loan for example, this will be a negative in this particular account. If you ever see a negative number here, don't freak out. That's an actual picture of what your books look like. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just stop the video at this point. This is the Chart of Accounts Part 1. And we're going to go ahead and jump into the second part of this. So go over to the next video, which will be Section 3, and it'll be Part 2 of Section 3, and we'll continue. Hi everyone, Simon here from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching this video. If you need additional training from QuickBooks Pro to help you effectively manage your small business, then check out our complete course for learning QuickBooks Pro 2015. It's an eight hour course with over 70 video training tutorials. Just click the button right over there with additional information. I'll see you next week with more videos.